Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Read I.O. So, we're ready to start Route C. So, let's go. A young woman standing in solitude. All I can hear is the beating of a heart. A light pressure envelops my body, slowing my brain functions to a crawl. I'm all alone, floating half-submerged like a jellyfish. I never like darkness. Darkness dissolves everything, even shadows. Everything gets devoured. Everything melds into nothingness. And nobody turns to the darkness as they do to the light. But without darkness, there is no light. I know this now. For I am darkness, but I may still become light. Or is that too luxurious of a wish? How long have I been wandering? A few seconds? An hour? A day? For all I know, it may have been forever. But I don't mind spending eternity like this. It's not uncomfortable at all. My body suddenly shakes. Someone just screamed into my ear. Get a hold of yourself. This isn't where you need to be. Hurry up and get to where he is. But where is that? A faint, gentle light shines down. Despite its softness, the light feels strong. As if it's guiding me, my feet suddenly spring toward the light. But the light gains no strength. In fact, it feels like it's weakening. Am I even getting any closer? Or am I just squirming in place? A chill suddenly pierces me from inside. It hurts. Am I going to die here? But I haven't finished what I need to do. No, 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 no! If I die here, how could I apologize to everyone? I can't just let him wander around in the darkness like this. So... What the heck? My hair falls down on my face and shoulders as if gravity had been restored. A seemingly endless spiral staircase stretches beyond the water's surface. Did I get here from the top? Or the bottom? And in the midst of what seems like an infinite loop, the moon enters an eclipse. An overwhelming red veil conceals its presence. The power of the moon vanishes. A feeling of complete loss. The loss of the entire world. Did I know what would happen? Or that would happen? Despondency, despondency quickly spreads through my body, engulfing it in flame. A Mirbia strip tears into my flesh. Fear claws at my heart. <laughs> my voice vanishes into thin air. Nothing returns. Am I alone? In a Klein bottle forever searching for an exit? Hmm. <clears throat> As I am alone. In a Klein bottle forever searching for an exit. Just... Searching for you. This is... Um... No date? When I come to my senses, I'm running. But where am I going? Probably to where he is. My sole guidepost is the gentle moonlight. Looks like it's a full moon tonight. My left eye's imaginary vision abruptly activates. Imaginary vision is a visual system. Specifically, it refers to a special eye that can perceive normally invisible energy sources, such as residual magnetic fields and infrared rays. One particularly useful application is detecting someone's presence and discerning their character through the colors they emit. But why the heck did it activate by itself? Ah? Huh? The moon is rapidly waning. Did my eye react to this change? This might have some serious significance, so I start recording with my cyber eye. 
As the eclipsing umbra grows, so does my anxiety. What is this emotion? No matter what I do, I can't wipe away this bad feeling. And as soon as the moon becomes fully hidden, my irritation peaks. That systematic alarm brings back my consciousness. I'm awfully uneasy, but I shake that out of my head by force. Everything will be okay. You'll make it in time. You just gotta hurry. I see a room. Ominous red light spreads out from its entrance. He must be there. For some reason, I'm sure of it. I desperately whip my frozen legs into motion and surge to the entrance. And that's when... <coughs> His heart-rending lament echoes across the room. My hopes, as well as his, have fallen into despair. I can do nothing but tremble in place. The shining red moon peeks down from the heavens through the shattered ceiling. The light stains the world a chaotic crimson, bringing hell on earth. And in the heart of this earth lie his shoulders. He holds a girl in his arms. Her muscles don't even twitch. Her head, her arms, her legs, everything just dangles as it submits to gravity. Suddenly, only her bare feet descend to the floor. I instinctively gasp. Fresh blood gushes from his fists. His dangling right arm trembles slightly. The depths of his despair seem sufficient to destroy the world. My chest hurts. He's just a few steps away, but I can't approach him. All I can do is stare as the sight is burned into my eyes. I want to call out to him. I want to touch his heart. But how am I supposed to call out to him? My throat tightens in pain. The world blurs as tears stream out of my eyes. If there's anything I can do, it's... Give me strength, Onesama. Give me courage, no matter how small. Courage to stand up to the truth. As long as I have that, then I... Okay, this is seriously weird. Um, when I come to, I find myself back at the hideout. Which means, that was all a dream? Did I doze off? <coughs> My whole body is stiff, so I stretch out wide like a cat. Then I happen to catch sight of the words displayed on the PC monitor. Game over. That seems somewhat relevant to what's been going on. All I clearly remember is that I was with him. I get the feeling I'm forgetting something important. But why can't I remember what it is? The monitor displays today's date. April... The calendar says it's spring, but the desolation in my heart tells me otherwise. <laughs> I quickly crouch down and reach for my waist. For my gun. The only people who should know about this place are the few people I can trust. Exarch didn't find me, did they? Wouldn't be hard to believe. They're the largest corporation in the network industry, after all. They could easily find this place if they really wanted to. I used to work for them, but now... I've got a debt that I can never, ever repay. But even if it's Exarch, my existence should be no more than a mere hindrance to them. I hold my breath and survey the area, but I don't feel anyone's presence. Was the lighting all that fell? Everything is silent, save the computer's faint whir. How much time has passed? Let's just get this over with. 
I'm impatient, but not impatient enough to make the first move. That's exactly what they want. But seriously, how long is this going to take? <laughs> On the other side of my gun barrel. Uh? Magudare. Is Magdalene. I say Mika, hugging her knees in the corner. Wait, when did she get there? I put down my gun and simultaneously relax my entire body. Magdalene and I are members of the freelance hacker group Criminal. She's a friend I can trust. But something's wrong. Why isn't Magdalene wearing her trademark glasses? Her eyes are blank, as if she's gazing through me and into space. Magda... Ren? She seems... different from when we last met. When was that, anyway? My memory seems to be all foggy. Ugh. My head... hurts... all of a sudden. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts! Sobete <laughs> Magdalene starts talking abruptly, as if my headache were a signal or something. I'm not liking that expression on her face. Magdalene's eyes finally focus on me, her gaze full of magic. What exactly is it that's different about her? I don't think she's ever been this obtuse before. Magdalene's expression clouds over, her eyes fill with resignation. Why does she look so sad? I struggle to raise my voice as I apply pressure to my head. <laughs> my headache becomes a raging thunderstorm wreaking havoc in my skull. And then everything goes dark. I guess I'm outside now. Did the pain get so unbearable that I ran out of the hideout without even realizing it? Or is this all still a dream? I don't know. Either way, at least that headache's gone. But in its place is a brain-shaking roar. No matter how many times I hear it, I'll never get used to this sound. It's the sound of... He turns to the right. One. He turns to the left. Two. With each precise movement, the conductor directs his orchestra of falling bodies. His merciless tempo is kept with shells of cold lead. He moves with a streamlined accuracy of a killing machine. Any hint of emotion stays hidden behind his sunglasses. But what emotion hides behind those shades? Anguish or bliss? Why do you kill? <laughs> A woman with glossy gray-brown hair, dressed in, a, in prim and proper attire. Aya looks down upon me. Part of the genius hacker group Anunnaki and one of the goddesses who makes up its great triad, somewhere in that small body of hers lies an unfathomable ability for space and design. <laughs> He. That's what they call the guy I'm looking for, a hero on the net, known far and wide. I don't know what he is thinking, but I am painfully aware of the consequences Ea is referring to. Just one thing, right now I'm an intruder too, just like he is. 
Furthermore, it's impossible for the likes of me to stand my ground in a battle of superhumans. Wait, what event? And it's not just the ghosts. Even the considerably numerous virtual other selves in Babylon have begun acting autonomously? It hurts. My head's throbbing with a splitting headache again. Just what is this pain? These guys are under my command? The instant I consider that thought, a command line interface and a video game-esque minimap open up before my eyes. I'm not entirely sure why, but it looks like I can influence what's going on around me. The flashing red dot on the map is undoubtedly he. Surrounding the red dot are countless green dots, but with each passing moment the green dots become a little less countless. I bite my lip. The conspicuously huge danger warning sign indicates the red dot's trajectory. He must not be allowed near Babylon's core. He must be stopped at all costs. Your orders, Lady Inanna? The command line flickers as it awaits my command. Inanna? Well, sure, Inanna is Ishtar's Sumerian name, but... No, just forget about that for now. No, let's not forget about that. Let's, uh... Maybe read about it. Inanna, the Sumerian goddess of love. Her counterpart in Babyl Babylonian mythology is Ishtar. According to legend, she descended into the underworld, but eventually returned to the surface. I admonish myself, and the very next instant, my headache disappears. He is in an underground tunnel. Once he gets through, he'll be, in a, hair's, he'll be a hair's breadth away from Babylon's ziggurat. First things first, we need to concentrate our firepower and stop him in his tracks. I instruct the troops to spurt throughout all floors to assemble immediately at the elevator hall with four passages. I deliberately understaff one corridor and rig it with explosives. Once he gets close enough, we'll concentrate our firepower and corner him there, alive, at all costs. But underestimate him would mean crushing defeat. Roger. The green dots mobilize on my command. Will he make it first, or will they? A race against time. Deployed at designated location, on standby for further orders. Successful deployment reports keep coming in. But I'm still uneasy about one thing. He has incredible power and skill. There's always the possibility that he can see through our every move. But that doesn't matter. Nothing matters as long as we can buy time. Every second counts. But then I suddenly realized a terrifying truth. I thought he was just an online urban legend. Why is he here in reality? He has invaded the depths of Babylon. The red dot on the monitor stops. There's no time to think. That's the signal for battle to resume. The red dot slowly begins retreating. It seems not even the powerhouse he can advance. Eh? Several green dots abruptly jump. Matthew. I send another message, ordering them not to blindly rush in. But before I can, he obliterates green dot after green dot. I was mo I was a moment too late. The number of green dots gets cut in half. Cut in half. He is like a bloodlusting beast. What now? What tactic can I use to stop he? I receive an urgent message. Who's it from? Magdalene? No, couldn't be. I shake away all idle thoughts and quickly send the evacuation order. As it makes its rounds, the individual units amass into several clumps of green dots. Then they disperse chaotically at their own discretion. I let this continue, then give permission to activate the bomb. Okay. 
the red dot's movements become more sluggish. I guess he is taking caution because of our suspicious actions. But that's exactly what we want. My hand moistens with an unpleasant sweat. He will be okay, won't he? All dots cease movement. The green dots start moving again. Perhaps the explosions have settled. The red dot is surrounded by an encroaching green circle. And it remains still. My heart hurts. I can't take my eyes off the map. Move, move, move! I can do nothing but repeat my prayer. And then... The green circle disappears. The red dot reanimates. Did he defeat my army? I fall into despair the moment I consider that possibility. What am I even protecting? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't even know where my friends are. And then my soul... I can hear a voice somewhere in the distance. A voice with a familiar timbre. A voice I've missed so much. But whose voice is it? That's Kosuke, isn't it? The voice groans at me from point blank range. If I'm not mistaken, this somewhat aloof voice belongs to. Oh, it's Equus, that is, Miyata Kosuke, my reliable companion. My prayers were answered. We're connected to the network via biocomputer. That's why we can see each other just by wishing for it. He's finally rampage final rampage must be stopped at all costs. That's my goal, my vow. Just one thing. When and where did I take that vow again? I don't remember. The encouraging tone of his voice actually casts me further in doubt. The bottom of my heart prickles in pain. Equus strikes his chest again as if he is making a vow. His eyes shine with an encouraging gleam. Maybe he doesn't notice my guilt. I'm sorry, Equus, but I. I feel no reprieve from the from the pain in my heart. What is this sound? This ominous foreign noise? A violent sound wave jolts my brain. That stimulus yanks me back to consciousness. The smell of gunpowder. This is the war zone. I'm not directing the battle from afar this time. I'm standing in the middle of it. If he's opposing if he's opposing he, then that voice must belong to a member of the cyber terrorist syndicate code. And almost as if to support my theory, inhuman faces peek out from the cover of car doors and support posts. Faces belonging to codebreakers, members of Code's covert task force. In their arms shine the intense black luster of firearms. Oh crap, that's a grenade launcher! Just as I rush behind a support post, several flames ignite in the distance. I turn my face away to avoid the melody of shockwaves. 
The sprinkler system soon sweeps the flames away, but they were easily big enough to engulf an entire human. I stare at the ground as I walk so I don't step on any broken light bulbs. What the hell is Code aiming at? Imaginary Vision finds human silhouettes coming from a completely different direction from the launcher's roar. I guess Code is trying to approach He without him noticing. Should I speak up? No, that's way too dangerous. Right now, I don't even know whose side I'm on. He's or Code's. Now it's He's turn to peek out from the, sh from the shade of his support post. One second I catch a glimpse of a pump-action shotgun. And the next I see a car with a gaping hole, hole in its door, a code member's head on its dashboard, and a red-tinted windshield. Undaunted by his ally's death, the other code member fires in retaliation, but he promptly finds cover. He reappears with a gun in each hand, but is that really enough? In a near repeat of the previous shotgun blast, the second code member falls behind his car door. Several more flames ignite. The explosions surge forward in no small number, and on the opposite side, a detachment of code forces closes the distance even more. Is he still unaware of their plan? I reach to my hip with my right hand and take out my HMK P7. I get up, ready my stance, stick my right hand directly toward Code's detachment force, and support the gun with my left. Wait, have I ever practiced marksmanship? It's like those times you don't remember something, but your body does. I toss away all idle thoughts and focus all senses on my target. My bullet strikes a front lineman of Code's detachment force squarely in the chest. The man falls to a knee. I reflexively hide behind the post at the sound of that voice. A bullet grazes my side, and then... I take a quick peek out of the shadows and gasp. Two front linemen of Ko's detachment force become filled with holes. Blood gushes out of those holes and onto their tattered skin and clothes. Looks like he finally noticed them. Thank God. But before I get time to relax, Code's no longer covert detachment force begins focusing their sights on he. <coughs> he punctually snipes the Codebreaker's vital organs. The instant he pulls the trigger, his head turns to seek his next target. No time is wasted verifying downed bodies. It's an al almost like children picking a fight with a grown man. I'm not even worried. I'm downright terrified. Is there any way to stop the all-consuming destruction of he who hides behind his mask of composure? <laughs> a code member exposes his honest feelings in a heartfelt cry. His lips warp downward, and his feet stamp the ground. That man shakes off his concerned allies and boards a light van park nearby. Is he going to run he over? An aura of blind fury is not visible on the driver's face at all. He's gone back to the usual inhuman expression befitting a member of Code. How did he calm down so quickly? Don't tell me, he used drugs? Come to think of it, that code man who followed Magdalene was the same way, but did this code member use it to enhance his fighting spirit? English. Soon enough, the dispersed code members begin firing from all directions. Out of options, he starts to roll on the ground, but the van plunges forward to crush he. Just before impact, the van suddenly breaks. Its body shakes. The attack coming this way grows ever violent as well. I lower my posture and hide in the shade of a car on the on the side opposite of the bullet's trajectories. He will make it out of this okay, won't he? Everyone's already forgotten my location since their aim is concentrated elsewhere. So let's sneak away to another car. 
I bend backwards as a bullet whizzes past my eyes and bang my back against the car. Huh? The van that was aiming for he is close by. I don't know if it's in the middle of a turn, but it's pointed right at me. Oh crap. The van decided on a new target. Me. <laughs> One moment I see the ceiling, then I take a half turn, and now I'm facing the floor. That voice. Hey, Chris. He came for me, just like he promised. The van makes a U-turn. Is he still trying to get me? Equus's warm arm is, is stir, sturdy and reassuring. So reassuring it feels like he can do anything. Was that he just now? The van leans to the right, its front tires shot out. The driver frantically tries to regain balance, but the van topples over and slides to a halt. Equus gets up first and reaches out his hand. I take it and get up with his support. Equus starts galloping ahead, his hand still clasped around mine. He seems just a tad more manly than the Equus I know. Has he changed since I last saw him? The only thing approaching us is a single set of footsteps, probably he's. Judging by the otherwise silent sound spectrum, Code must have been annihilated or, or has withdrawn. Equus's grip momentarily tightens, as if to tell me things will be okay. I'm happy. Yet at the same time, I feel an awkward discomfort deep in my heart. Equus lets go of my hand and gets onto a motorcycle. I holster my gun and do as I'm told. Equus looks over to his right, and there... There stands he with his guns out in an intimidating pose. Equus sticks his hand in a pocket and takes something out. A flashbang? Before I can give my eyes proper cover, my body and soul are enveloped in a floating sensation. The only sense I can rely on is my fingertips around Equus. <laughs> the motorcycle lets out a hearty exhaust note. His footsteps fade into the distance. And for some reason, my ears still yearn to hear that sound. <laughs> 